Hi. <clears throat> Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today I'm sick. So I'm gonna give you a sick video about my power bank. And my voice is absolutely terrible. I can hear that myself. You don't have to comment on that. Okay. I have some more stuff that I'm gonna be uh, putting into the power bank system. And I thought that we should just uh, go uh, have a look at that. And I also have the charge controller, that red thing, sitting on the table for, uh, well, that's over a month. And I thought that maybe today was the day that I would go and mount that, because um, it doesn't take much effort. I'll just hang it there and it will be off my table. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's gonna be a sick video. Let's go to the table. Okay, so just watching the videos can be well, you might lose track. Um, so I made a drawing and up here we start with the sun. That's the sun and it's uh, shining on these solar panels. And I have these solar panels co connected up two and two in series and the whole system parallel. And that makes so that I get about 120 volts DC out of this. That runs through a way too long wire down into the basement where I have a big, um, it has a big switch so that I can turn it off. Then it runs into, right now it runs into this charge controller, which is one of the red ones. Just like this one, so um, that is already mounted. This one is gonna be the other one. And uh, the first one is in charge of charging the lead acid batteries. I have a very big uh, I think it's very big. It's 24 kilowatt hours of power there. A total of 24 batteries out there. Then the second charge controller is gonna go, it's gonna be sitting right beside it. So this is actually pretty accurate. And it's gonna be in charge of handling the, the lithium ion battery packs here. Right now I have two that are, that are close to finish. So I've, I've drawn those two. So it will be able to store the power down to those. The charge controller has a power output as well. So you put power in, you can put that to the batteries or you can use that, that power. And that's a total of 40 amps. That is 48 volts, 40 amps. And that is able to go out of the charge controller. And it's pretty cool to have the charge controller control that because if the battery voltage becomes too low, well, the charge controller will actually tell uh, the system that, well, now the batteries are too low, I will sh you are not going to get any power anymore. So we have two of those. So combined, they should be able to, um, to deliver about 80 amps uh, out this way. Down to this UPS that I also have installed, and there is switches. There are switches on all of these battery banks, and there are going to be switches on these as well so that you can turn them off. But power goes down to this UPS and uh, that converts the power from 48 volts, 40, and that's DC, and up to 240 volt AC. Where can we fit that AC then? Uh, it's gonna be small. There. And it's a pure sine wave, so it's that's a, that's why we are using this UPS. Um, it delivers a really good clean power output. And there are switches and fuses and all that good stuff. Uh, there's a really big switch slash fuse right there. But then I want something called a power transfer switch. That is a switch where you can put in, this is grid power. This is the power company up here. And we can have a, a wire coming into the system uh, into the power transfer switch and we can have our UPS and battery and solar system coming in on the other leg of that. It will decide if uh, if this power is good or if this power is good and it can it knows which one it should prefer and of course it, it should prefer the the power coming from the UPS over the power coming in from the grid and uh, go out to my outlet so that I can use the power. 
The idea of this is that the battery gets drained too much or if they stop working or something, then I would like the system to switch over to use the grid instead. But as soon as the batteries are good again, well, the transfer switch will think, oh, we have good power, we will be switching to internal system and use the internal system and then just not use the grid. And as I'm gonna be, I was hoping to use this for my computers and stuff, I don't want that to boot or do anything stupid like that. So I need a pretty good power transfer switch. There is a power transfer switch built into the UPS. I am not sure if I'm able to use that. That would be so neat to be able to just scratch this. If I could tell the UPS, well, battery power is preferred. You should use that. And then if the battery power does not work, well, then you should use the grid. We could, we could draw a little grid here. I would like that. That's, 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 oh, that's, that's, that's the grid. It's so clear, right? Then I could save this power transfer switch or more or less, I wouldn't need it. Uh, normally the UPS works the other way around. It will prefer the grid power over the battery power because it just has a limited amount of battery power. I'll need to look into this if the UPS is hackable in that way so that it will prefer the other thing. But well, it's kind of an overview of what I'm thinking and I was wanted to show you this thing because I just got my hands on one of those. Here is a power transfer switch. It's really simple at least on the outside. I haven't been inside. It has a serial connector and it has um, something that can trigger. I um, would be able to say to tell it through a connector here, uh, switch to the other power input. So let's start around the back. Around the back, we have two power intakes. We have one from, from A and one from B. And each of them has a, an, uh, a good big 16 amp fuse. So uh, a lot of power available there. You put in power from, your, from the UPS in one and from the grid in the other one. Then you have power output on all of these. I wouldn't need all of these, but well, you have all of these. So, and it has a couple of 10 amps automatic fuses, whatever, as long as there is power on one of these, well, these outlets will have power and it will be uninterrupted. So you would not be able to, to see out here that the power uh, failed. You might be able to see it if you put on an oscilloscope. You might see a spike or a something weird going on for a split of a millisecond. But then the power would be good again. And that is exactly what we want. So on the front, this is a rack mountable unit because it's designed to be used with servers. So you can have multiple power inputs and make sure that some device doesn't lose power even if one of the power sources goes. It's very often used when you have something like an old network switch which only has one power supply and you don't want that to go down if the grid power goes down or something like that. Then you put in a transfer switch like this. On the front we have the two power input and we can pick one or two. It has a little button here and you can press that and it will pick the other one if there is power on it. If, uh, if you only have power on one I'm pretty sure that you can press it and then it will cut. Uh, that would be stupid. Actually I don't know. I would think that would be stupid. I actually thought that we should have a look inside because I'm curious and when I'm curious well some of you guys are curious as well, so let's um, let's uh, satisfy our curiosity. And we need some chocolate. I actually have one of these in the data center that was sent to me by Marcus subscriber. Oh, this is nice. I thought that would it would just be a little bit in one corner. I see that this is a little bit all over the place. This is way more complicated than I would have thought. This is able to switch between 16 amps of power. And that's very important that 
uh, when you switch from one system to another system that you don't make a double spike hit the power at exactly the wrong uh, point in time you can it's not it's not as bad if you get a twice the amount of zero that will that will probably be okay but if you get a spike after a spike just uh, on top of each other well you end up getting double the voltage or something bad and you might uh, kill the electronics that you uh, have connected to this and that's not a good thing so this transfer switch is made to prevent that so that you can switch from one to another and it should not get any harmful peaks of power or voltage there's a lot of stuff in this one I was actually thinking if, if it was a little bit of a circuit board over here and it was just a big box so that it could be rack mountable well I might have wanted to put it in another box I see that is not a good solution I don't want to mess with all of that let's close that up again so here is the label of it and it's a 16 amp 230 volt um, if you see down here it's 220 230 240 volts so it will do all of them there is some grounding that I have to look into because uh, yeah we need some good ground to this as well okay I have shown this solar charge controller MPPT in another video and um, the main feature of it it's very uh, well priced it's affordable let's call it that and um, it has these mounting brackets on here and if you mount it well it's gonna be flapping in the wind down here so um, old-time engineer uh, here on YouTube uh, I, I saw his video and he put a screw in down here and I'm gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna tell my trusty Ryobi drill and I'm gonna find a drill bit that will that will do the trick and I'll put an extra hole in it so that I can prevent that from doing that oh that's not gonna cool so somewhere where there is a lot of room so that I don't hurt anything here that's not in, that's not in view there we don't want to drill down into the table so I think that will be good uh, I don't think we need that hammer thing hammer on oops oh scratches on my new drill damn and we want to get rid of all these metal filings that came off we don't really want those in the charge controller I need to find some screws that will mount this and we'll go do that I found some screws this one even has a nice little plastic thing here that will hold on down there and uh, these two I removed that plastic thing because it's not needed up there so uh, let's go uh, mount this I think we need a marker and the level and the drill and well yeah I'm gonna have my arms full I left a good spot for it on the on the mounting board over here so I want to I want to have as much room as there is here on the other side as well just it doesn't need to look like shit well it might look like shit but it doesn't need to I'm gonna do a little effort to make it not look like too much shit so yeah I'm um, I'm gonna figure out where to put it and then um, I'll get back to you okay I'm not sure if this is straight uh, oh, I hope so uh, what I did I put it up there and I decided that the to exclude the white wire cage here so I was going for this distance to have that over there as well I think that would make it look better then I put up the box and I drew I took the box and I, I just used a pin to to draw out where the screw would sit up here in this hole and well, I hope that it's it's gonna be okay I tried to level it out let's see how well that worked so I'm gonna I put in the first screw I'm gonna take it out again to mount the box but I'm gonna screw in an, a second screw over here because it's so much easier to make that screw hold when you're not holding the box as well 
together with the, the drill and the drill bits and yeah all that stuff so I'll make the screw hole and then take the screw out again and put the box on. How does that look? It's not too bad. I can live with that. It's gonna be great. Yeah, you um, you might be able to see that, <clears throat> and that's what we are gonna prevent with why we made that screw hole down there. So um, I'm gonna put the screw with the little plastic thing on there, and we will keep that into the wall. Perfect. So we mounted something today, we got a bit further, it's not a lot. Yeah, I know, that was a sick video, pathetic, right? Yeah, I'm gonna, I have a busy day ahead of me, I have to find out where to be sick first. Yeah, thank you very much for watching along, please remember to give this sick video a like, it, it helps, I'll get better a lot sooner if there's a lot of likes on it, I'm sure. Might be lying a little bit there, sorry about that. Now I have to do that thumbnail thing, that's gonna be great. So, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Hopefully this voice will become better. Bye bye.